Hello, and welcome to Great.com Talks With. Today, we're talking with Joshua Pittman from David Lynch Foundation, an organization that helps to prevent and eradicate epidemic of trauma and toxic stress among at-risk populations through promoting widespread implementation of the evidence-based transcendental meditation program in order to improve their health, cognitive capabilities, and performance in life. And if you're new to our podcast, please press subscribe button either on YouTube or your podcast app, because today we're going to learn about an organization that is healing traumatic stress and raising performance through transcendental meditation. Hello, Joshua. Welcome to Great.com Talks. We're very excited to have you here. Hi, Kareem. Very nice to be here. Thank you. Wonderful. How would you describe David Lynch Foundation for someone who is not familiar with your work? Sure. The David Lynch Foundation is a nonprofit organization. We're based in New York City, but have uh, offices in Los Angeles, Chicago, um, Washington, D.C., and also starting to have uh, offices and centers around the world. And David Lynch is the filmmaker. You probably know he's been around for quite a while and learned transcendental meditation in the 1970s, found that it really helped reduce his stress level, reduce anger, and improve his creativity. And in 2005, um, he worked with uh, Bob Roth, the, who's currently the CEO of the David Lynch Foundation, to start the David Lynch Foundation for Consciousness, based education and world peace. That's the full name, it's a long name, but it really says, speaks to our goals, which is to bring stress reducing transcendental meditation to high stress at risk groups um, for, of different populations. Mm -hmm. It's very important to address um, the stress that this um, at risk population is facing at this uh, moment um, around the globe and the fact that your organization is working on that through uh, the practices of transcendental meditation um, is right. there um, very essential in these times for everyone who is in need of um, such meditation. Could you please describe what does transcendental meditation uh, include? How is it different from other meditation practices and what's its sure. impact on uh, participants? Absolutely. Well, the, the name kind of says it, transcendental meditation. To meditate, we know there are many different types of meditation. It basically means to follow a train of thought. And then transcendental means to go beyond, to go beyond our thought process, to allow the mind and body to settle down to a very profound and unique style of rest, to experience quieter and quieter levels of thinking. One thing I like about the transcendental meditation technique is that it's easy. It's so easy to do, so easy to learn. It's done sitting comfortably in a chair with your eyes closed, and it's purely a mental technique. So there's no chanting involved. There's no specific way to sit. You sit comfortably in a chair. You can sit up in bed, prop, yourselves up, prop yourself up with pillows. Um, we teach children from the age of 10 the same sitting down, eyes closed meditation that adults learn. Very easy to do very easy to practice. 20 minutes twice a day is the prescription for transcendental meditation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Based on uh, your description, it seems uh, quite simple, yet quite effective. You mentioned that uh, it's only, uh, it can be 20 minutes long and you can just do it at the comfort of your home with your eyes closed. And when you were describing it, I felt um, the <laughs> of being of, uh, in the presence of doing a meditation. So that's, um, and it's something everyone can do from their homes and uh, it's very accessible and that's uh, important because uh, you don't have to go to a yoga class you don't have to right. go to a particular place or uh hear some music or you just need to be with yourself and go through um your thought process and it's um and it helps reduce stress and enhance performance as mentioned um by you earlier and um, we discussed earlier that stress has become an epidemic across the globe um could you please describe the reasons it has become such an epi epidemic right. and who are at most risk um, of trauma and stress absolutely you know, I, th I think it's stress is increasing and has been increasing even before the pandemic. And a lot of that has to do with our, you know, our modern lifestyle, which is we're always on the go. We're always plugged in now more than ever. We're expected to be on call at any time through our cell phones, through our computers. 
you know, we're, we're always on call, always on the go. And this is something that generally as society, we value, right? The person who can get by on four hours of sleep, who can work 16 hour days, you know, and, and always multitask, but that comes at a cost, right? You know, if we're always pushing ourselves, you know, our, the machinery of our physiology, our nervous system accumulates stress and this wears us down. It affects our ability to be productive. So what transcendental meditation does is, you know, it has this idea that rest is the basis of activity. We know that if we sleep well during the night, we're more refreshed and more energized and more dynamic during the day. If we don't get enough rest, we're not as dynamic. So transcendental meditation provides this very powerful rest that enables a person to be even more successful and productive in their day. Now, of course, this last year in the pandemic, we've been facing stress in a in a new and you know untested way that we've been challenged on many many different levels through our our health concerns and you know job concerns job loss so we we've seen definitely an increased need even of course in this past year for meditation and i think people have really been looking for something that can counterbalance you know, our, our stressful lives. And transcendental meditation is very simple. We've, um, as the David Lynch Foundation this past year has started an initiative to bring transcendental meditation to perhaps the, the population who's faced the, the, the highest increase of stress, which is the healthcare workers. So we have a new initiative, Heal the Healers Now. You know, our, our healers, our healthcare workers, doctors, nurses are giving their all to take care of us, right? But now who's taking care of them? So that's our goal is to bring transcendental meditation to frontline healthcare workers to um, um, help them to reduce their stress, build resilience, recover from you know the height of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the increase um, in economic activity before the pandemic and the competition right. that is going in the world uh, among job force and people uh, being distracted by social media, there's so many distractions and not getting enough of rest uh, led right. to many people across many different um, industries, across many different age, le uh, age groups um, face the stress and uh, we need something a tool um, that can help uh, us to rest, that can help us to recover and transcendental meditation can pro can be uh, such a tool and can provide such a platform where uh, we can reduce our stress levels as well as um, we can uh, increase our capabilities and uh, cognitive activities as well. And the fact that you have de um, developed a program at Devin Lynch Foundation, uh, the, heal the healers now where you're helping the frontline workers uh, who are at most risk is very important. Um, can we talk more in detail about the Heal the Healers uh, program? Um, what kind of um, stress did the healthcare, healthcare uh, workers um, face for someone who is not familiar with the industry itself and how Transcendental uh, Meditation and David Lynch uh, Foundation has addressed um, those stress triggers among healthcare workers and helped them right. to overcome them? Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, the healthcare industry, I think, has always been stressful taking care of, you know, the, you know, sick people and, you know, even and, and now more, most especially the increase of putting themselves at risk of, you know, getting infection with with COVID. Um, you know, the height of the pandemic, hospitals had to, you know, were at capacity, right? And doctors, nurses, healthcare providers had to decide who was the sickest, who needed the care, who had the highest chance of recovery. You know, imagine making that, being in a position to have to make that decision, who gets this last ventilator, who gets this last hospital bed. So of course there's the stress of, you know, longer work hours, there's the stress of, you know, seeing sickness and seeing death. But then this, this decision of, you know, deciding who gets the treatment, perhaps who gets to live. You know, there's this, uh, I think, developing understanding of moral injury, right? That, you know, someone put in a position where they have to make these decisions that really no one should have to make. So 
I think, you know, the, the stress level has really gone off the charts. Um, we've seen increased uh, death by suicide amongst healthcare providers um, during this pandemic. And, you know, this, this is the tool, as you said, a tool, but also a practice. You know, wellness practice is something that we can integrate into our daily life. A tool we use when something's busted, right? When something's broken, I need to fix it. And of course, transcendental meditation, the TM technique, can be used to reduce stress. When you're feeling stressed, you can meditate and feel better, right? But if it's something that you can integrate into your daily life, into your routine as a wellness practice, what the effect is then that it not only helps you recover from stress, but it helps build resilience so that when you go into a stressful situation, you know, we can be more able to handle it, more prepared for it. And that's, you know, I think something that's much more effective. We'll look at the, the the healthcare system. You know, there's preventive medicine, which is much more effective than you know than disease care. Healthcare is something that we can do to build our health, whereas disease care is something we're kind of against the you know against the wall and and fighting back. So you know, I think that's something I've seen as you know, and I've tried to build as my philosophy that I'd much rather do something that's preventive and to. Pre- to build myself up, to strengthen myself, whether that's my mental health, my physical health, my social, emotional well-being, you know, rather than doing it retroactively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for indicating that it's not uh, just one-time practice, one not one-time tool, but if we, um, not one-time tool, but if we make it out of it a practice that um, we incorporate it um, a transcendental meditation to our lives daily or weekly on, and it can help us to build that uh, resilience. And you, you mentioned that in healthcare, uh, preventive medicines works much more. So working pre-factum versus working post-factum right. is much more effective. And transcendental meditation can be such um, preventive practice that can help us to not to build resilience against stress and not be uh, condemned on um, stressful situations so we can overcome them much much more easier and it doesn't affect our health it doesn't affect our mental health and physical health and we can continue performing at the level that we have been performing before especially for healthcare workers during these times you mentioned um, the fact that they had to make life um, life decisions for on behalf of someone else and it put a lot of pressure on them but uh, having this practice that uh, transcendental meditation practice may might have um, allowed them to uh, reduce that stress level as well as for the upcoming situations build it resilience towards it Another at risk uh, group um, population um, is uh, veterans and veterans see wounds of war. And when they come from the war, they have many traumas and stress. Um, What kind of, could you please describe um, what kind of um, post uh, war traumas do they have and how transcendental uh, meditation Mm -hmm. as well as your 21 to uh, non program can help uh, veterans overcome uh, such right. traumatic experiences that they had while they were at the war. Right, right. Thank you for for bringing that up because it is so important and something that's really uh, close to my heart. I've been working on our veterans initiative for the past few years, um, working with VA hospitals and as well as community organizations that um, support veterans. Um, you know, veterans and human beings in general are a highly resilient group, right? We can take a lot of stress, um, but we shouldn't have to carry that, right? Accumulated stress that we don't deal with. And I'm not just talking about mental stress, but the physical impact, right? How the body responds to stress. This wears us down and it affects our health. Um, You know, post-traumatic stress disorder we've we've heard about is, uh, you know, has many different signs and symptoms, depression, anxiety, insomnia, all of these factors are um, affected by uh, post-traumatic stress. And whether that's from the experience of, um, you know, during military um, or coming back and transitioning back home, where I think a lot of veterans um, actually have faced increased stress. You know, a lot of um, 
people join the military at a young age, and then they come out of the military and have to readjust and adapt to, you know, to civilian life. And that's not an easy ask. They're not always given the tools to do that. And how are they able to repurpose the training that served them well during military, always being on alert, always being on edge, having to wake up, you know, at the, at the drop of a hat, if there was a, you know, if they're in a dangerous situation, you know, all of those things that kept them alive in, you know, a combat zone. Now we, we say those are disorders. Those are symptoms in, in regular life. So how to repurpose that, how to retrain that. And that's one thing that I've also seen that transcendental meditation helps with. It helps from the inside out. You know, this is not therapy. This is not talk therapy. We're not talking about their problems and helping them to, to look at what caused the problem and, you know, how to, how to let go. This is working on the level of the brain and the physiology. The rest that's gained during transcendental meditation is measurable. It actually has a unique effect on the brain. It increases coherence amongst the different parts of the brain and can actually heal the effect of trauma and chronic stress, which primarily shuts down the prefrontal cortex, right? If we're in a stressful situation, the prefrontal cortex, which is our thinking and planning, right? Our reasoning, we don't need to use that. If we're in a stressful situation, the prefrontal cortex shuts down and we go into fight or flight mode, right? But if we're under chronic stress over a period of time, or if we've experienced traumatic stress, then the prefrontal cortex does not come back online. So we're in our normal everyday life and we're facing normal everyday stresses. And yet we're in fight or flight mode, right? So that's why we can see, you know, fights breaking out for no reason, or, you know, how many times have you had you know, said something you didn't mean to say or do something five minutes later. Oh, I wish I didn't say that. Right. It's because we're carrying high level of stress. So what is transcendental meditation does do also, it increases blood flow and increased neuron connections in the prefrontal cortex. So we can actually reverse this pattern of chronic stress. The experience during transcendental meditation is both restful and alert at the same time. So it's almost the opposite of fight or flight. We see a great reduction of PTSD symptoms, reduced stress, physically, physically lowered cortisol level about twice as much during TM as the body is able to reduce cortisol during sleep, reduce anxiety, depression, better sleep. A lot of the veterans I teach are Vietnam War era veterans, and they tell me they haven't slept through the night in decades. And within a few days of practicing the TM technique, they say they're falling asleep more easily, and they're sleeping through the night. And you know, what is it? You know, it's it's not you, that you just meditate before bed. It's actually recommended that you don't meditate right before bed because it is so relaxing. You may have a surge of energy after meditating, but doing it routinely, meditate in the morning when you wake up and then in the afternoon, lower the stress level, right? So that when it is bedtime, there's a lot less to unwind. The wheels are not spinning so much you have an easier time falling asleep. So this is usually the first thing that uh, military veterans tell me is that they're sleeping better. They're, you know, they're feeling, feeling more refreshed, you know, when they wake up in the morning and, and more well-rested during the day as well. But we also see a reduction in a whole slew of other physiological measures. We see reduced blood pressure. People with high blood pressure actually can reduce their blood pressure from practicing transcendental meditation, you know, and it's because the body has a great natural healing mechanism when we're well-rested and when we're not putting so much burden on the physiology, then it maintains better health and functioning. We also see a reduction in substance abuse in, in people with substance abuse disorder, also in veterans, reduced alcohol and, and drug use. It builds resilience, right? Both psychological, emotional resilience. You know, this experience of transcending. It's an experience people say they, they come back to themselves. It's an experience people say, you know, I haven't felt this way since I was a kid. You know, as we go through life, stress accumulates and it kind of clouds our vision. We lose sense of really who we are and, you know, what our dreams were. And, you know, re- getting rid of the stress through, through transcending, through meditation, you know, it just helps you feel more content and, and grounded in yourself. So you feel more, more grounded and more, you know, more fulfilled actually. Mm-hmm. 
based on your descriptions, there are many uh, indeed health benefits uh, of transcendental meditation. And um, especially for veterans who are transitioning um, from um, military, from war, back to the uh, normal life, you mentioned right. Uh, it can this practice can allow them uh, to make the transition um, easier and that it can help them to sleep better because they are always uh, in the fight mode and now they uh, it's it might be hard for them just to switch into the peaceful call mode but through the transcendental meditation practice um, they can um, make the transition uh, much smoothly and uh, much much faster and uh, earlier you mentioned that uh your organization and you work uh, with the children from the age of 10. And uh, could you please describe why is it important to work with the children from a such young age so they can practice transcendental meditation right. and how it can help them to uh, prepare for adulthood? Another area very close to my heart. <laughs> I love teaching meditation in schools. Um, I I, I learned transcendental meditation when I was 16 years old, thanks to my stepdad, who also like David Lynch has been doing it since the seventies. Um, it's, it's his birthday today. So I got to give him a shout out. Um, <laughs> um, Roy, Roy Eden got me into transcendental meditation when I was a kid. And I remember thinking, boy, I wish I had this in my school. Um, prevention, right? It's all about prevention. If, you know, we can bring a practice into our life that will, build flexibility, build resilience, then we won't accumulate so much stress. So we have programs also introducing transcendental meditation into middle schools and, and high schools and colleges, right? And, you know, stress is unfortunately, we talked about how, you know, we're in a pandemic of stress as well, right? You know, children are facing adult level stresses from environmental, of course, just the stress of growing up and stress of schools. So giving them, you know, a, a, a process where they can, you know, again, a self-sufficient, right? Self-empowering process. They learn to meditate in a class, but then they can do it on their own. And the schools, you know, ideally the, the way the program works is that they integrate meditation or other forms of rest into their school day, have a, period of quiet time in the morning and afternoon. And it's amazing to see and feel the effect when 300 kids are meditating in their classrooms. It just creates an environment of tranquility, of peace that you can feel. And, you know, to give them something that is not just during school hours, but that they can take with them. A lot of my students tell me they do it on the weekends, that when they're you know, their, their kid brother was annoying them. Instead of beating them up, they would just go in their room and meditate. And I've even had some of my students contact me years later after they've graduated, tell me they were still, they're still meditating and that they are able to stick with it. So it really is a lifelong tool, something that builds up and accumulates. It's such a good cycle to be on, right? Stress accumulates and stress affects our thinking, stress, stress affects our behavior and impairs our ability to, to function fully, 100% to our capacity. But we could break that cycle, right? By building in this practice of reducing stress, building resilience so we're not taking on so much stress, in, in schools, we see that the graduation rates increase in the students that meditate um, and that they actually improve their academic performance. You know, how often does it happen that we study for a test and then we get in that room and we're feeling stressed or anxious and we can't recall, right? We can't remember what we just studied. You know, stress impairs our ability to be 100%. So this is, again, just giving them a way to be them, their full selves, to perform at their, their highest level. And, you know, again, it's from the inside out, improving brain performance, improving physical health and well-being. That affects our behavior, our outlook, affects our environment as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That, uh, the results are incredible. The fact that uh, child, uh, school children that practice transcendental meditation, uh, they're more likely to graduate as well as they're more likely to get better grades because they feel more rested. They uh, feel uh, their brain power is activated more. It's a great statistic that indicates that, that, that practice work as well as the teenage years being such a 
hard years i can i can imagine like i was a teenager myself I, and there were so many issues going on and if there is a practice such transcendental meditation if i knew about this practice i could have done it and it would have helped me to build as mentioned by you self-esteem self-confidence and make this transition and um to adulthood a much much more uh, easier so the fact that your organization is working with middle school uh, high school as well as uh, college kids is wonderful and helping them to build that resilience and to prepare them for adulthood the stress of adulthood so very well um, done if someone would like to support david lynch foundation how can they do that absolutely um i would say on different levels first of all there are tm centers all around the world where any individual can learn to meditate um, there is a course fee to learn transcendental meditation that supports your lifetime program so you know, as I said, some of my students contact me years later, you know, they can always refresh their meditation and get tune-ups. So this course fee supports your lifetime program, and it also helps our outreach initiatives um, to fund transcendental meditation training for those at high risk, for those with um, who are under resource, who have less means. Um, we're a nonprofit organization um, in the United States, so donations to uh, the David Lynch Foundation go directly to our scholarship funds for students, for veterans, for our uh, Heal the Healers healthcare program, as well as our program for um, men, women, and children victims of domestic violence, of spousal abuse, um, and sexual trauma. Um, and, you know, also I would say our, I think our our new direction is to really, in a sense, institutionalize transcendental meditation. So part of our work is to fund research studies to, to prove and demonstrate the effects of transcendental meditation. We're working on a major research uh, study um, with veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder to um, hopefully have it be a modality that the the VA offers, the Veterans Administration offers, but we'd like to introduce transcendental meditation into schools and have the, the school board funded. Um, our program in businesses as well help to support our, um, our initiatives for, um, for those in, in high need. So if you'd also love to bring transcendental meditation to yourself, but into your business, that helps fund our programs as well. Mm -hmm. wonderful the link to the david lynch foundation website will be provided in the description so you viewing and listening uh can go uh, to the website and learn more about the initiatives mentioned by joshua and support them uh in their mission thank you so much joshua it was wonderful to get to know you and the great work david lynch foundation is doing thank you so much Krim. i enjoyed our conversation for you listening, if you enjoyed this conversation, please press like and share button because this will show the YouTube and podcast algorithm that this conversation is important. In the epidemic of stress and uh, trauma, transcendental meditation can be a practice that can build the resilience and help us to overcome the stress. Thank you and see you in the next episode.